All right, hello wine drinking people. We are back with more of what I had to drink yesterday. And this is from our ultimate white tasting. And uh, we've had a phenomenal month of June. This is one of our once in a lifetime events, which, uh, well, it's called that just because I don't know how many times you would get to taste a collection of killer white wines like this in your life. All the wines on the table, 10 years or older, and uh, some legendary wines. Some very, wines that are very hard to find, therefore very expensive. Is it worth it to collect white wines? That was the big question of the evening. A lot of people, you know, have huge wine that have huge wine collections. Just have a few bottles of white in their collection. There's only one guy that I know. He knows who he is. That has more white wine in cellar than red, and uh, well, a lot of older stuff too. So I know Ray would think it's worth it to collect white wines, and I think we proved it to our crowd on this evening. All eight wines showed up, uh, phenomenal style. Well, the first wine, the Chateau Moussard, a uh, very unique varietal from Lebanon, Lebanon white varietal. Uh, this wine, we had two bottles, and um, you know. Glad that we opened up the second one because the first one was a little oxidized and this wine can be like that at first when it's opened up. But the second one had lovely fruit to it, totally different from the first wine. And that's one of the problems with, uh, well, cork finished wines and well, just wine in general. You do have bottles that are inconsistent. And I think the rest of the wines we had were pretty consistent and good examples of what they were. But the Moussard, the second bottle, was fabulous, 2004. All right, well, our first wine of the night was the 1997 Trimbach Close St. Hoon. And this is a Grand Cru, actually, uh, well, the vineyards are Grand Cru, uh, the Rosac are Grand Cru, but they don't put it on a label. And, you know, Phil Getzen, our resident Alsace expert, uh, told us that, uh, well, this vineyard has been around so long that uh, it's been around longer than the Grand Cru system. So they feel like the marketing value of this name, Clos St. Hoon, is more valuable than the Grand Cru Rosacker. So I have to agree with them. This is a lovely wine, the 1997, unlike in other parts of France, a very good vintage in Alsace. Wine had a lovely note of petrol along with some honey, some anise, some lavender, and white pepper spice, that white peach uh, fruit, a little chalky lemon kind of citrus. Lovely complexity on the nose here, really opening up nicely after being open for a couple of hours. Good concentration on the tongue. Not a blockbuster as you might imagine, but lovely balance. And this wine, uh, even better on the second day. You know, I've been keeping around these wines and these tastings on the second day to try them. Yeah, just open in the glass like this, and I found a lot of the better wines like this one was even bigger and a little longer finish on the second day quite youthful still at 15 years of age all right the colon delage chasson marache premier crew morgeau well this is a house that um doesn't exist anymore. Colin Delage uh, bequeathed his property on to Philip and Bruno, his two sons, and uh, this Morgeau. Uh, nice wine, you know, one not a great vintage. Caramel corn, kind of peach, a bit oxidized on the nose, showing some mu mushroom and earthy qualities, but still quite alive on the palate, you know, going through its second stage of life, which death for a wine. Uh, still a bit tangy on the finish and those caramely notes showing up uh, along with some fruit still left at the end, peach and lemon citrus. A really good little bottle of uh, Chasson Marmoshe. We still have some of this in the store at like $40 a bottle. All right, the 2002 Domaine Raveneau, uh, Chablis Blanchot Grand Cru. I'll never forget the visit to Raveneau I made on a Kermit Lynch trip and uh, Francois Raveneau opened up his 1978 Monte de Tonneur, brought it out of the cellar blind. We had no idea what it was or how old it was, and a lot of people thought it was an early 1990s or late 80s vintage wine. 1978 Premier Cru, just stunning, one of the greatest white wines I've ever had. Like this wine was, had that kind of seashell minerality that you get with Chablis, just shining through that lovely lightly buttered toast, the lemon curd tart. Very intense nose, opening up nicely. Lovely precision on the palate with this one with layers of flavors, vanilla cream, lemon drop citrus, really long and layered with that minerality just shining through on the finish. Most excellent juice. A candidate for wine of the night. Domaine Comp Lafon 2002, however, that was the wine of the night on the overwhelming majority of the scorecards. The Le Perrier Premier Cru Vineyard, uh, this lovely flinty matchstick kind of aroma, fresh butter toast, green apple, really bright and resonating bouquet, lemon drop candy just shining through as well. Uh, an amazing display on the, the tongue, just flavors that seem to pop, that minerality shining through on the finish, lovely freshness, those little stones uh, really showing through the vineyard site, the candied fruit, a long finish. This wine still has a ways to go. Killer juice, the wine of the night, the Comp Lafon Merceau Perrier 2002, a legendary vintage, legendary wine showing up on the table this evening. The 1995 Chateau Lavelle Aubryon, one of the great wines of Pessac. This wine had a lovely kind of pine and 
apple with a gravelly, minerally, stone-like quality, green melon, a light smoky sausage kind of note. Really took a while for this wine to open up, but uh, kind of a takedown after the Complafon wine. Unfortunately, we may have showed this first. It would have showed a little better, but still some nice fruit showing. Get great fruit citrus and a texture of whole milk on the tongue, that gravelly, minerally note showing up on the finish. An excellent bottle of uh, Bordeaux Blanc, and then the 1990 Aubryon. You know, I've had these Aubryon Blancs a couple times over the last few weeks. The 98 we had, and you know, the wine appeared a little bit oxidized at first, but uh, you know, this 90 also took a long time to open up. Had a really unique bouquet, a little Amontillado sherry-like, bit of a nutty quality floral, light smoke, that gravelly minerality you get from Pessac. Kind of a maple note coming out on the second day also, really exotic. This wine changed more than any of the other wines on the second day, so I raised the score up on this wine. It was most excellent on the first day, but killer on the second day. Kind of an animal sausage-like note to the finish. Uh, really meaty and a waxy texture to this wine. Just really thick and uh, kind of a red wine drinker's white wine. Uh, really beautiful stuff. A killer example of this wine, the 1990 Aubryon Blanc. All right, and then on to the sweet wines, which I thought went better with the food, actually, that night. Tony made some great chicken dish. Had this tangy lemon thyme kind of vinaigrette on it, which just really sang with a couple of the sweet wines, mainly the Emmanuel uh, Manchoff. Uh, Riesling Auschleys. Wow, man, that was one of the wines of the night also. This lovely butter popcorn aroma. Just really exotic. This white peach, peach nectar, flinty kind of slaty aroma there too. Really complex bouquet. Really sweet on the palate, but also very tart as well. This wine had lovely juxtaposition of sweet and sourness and uh, really, you know, the, with the prosciutto, the sage, the Gouda stuff, chicken roulade, just awesome dish, that tarragon lemon vinaigrette, like I said, the sweet and savory combination, both of those things working beautifully together on the second day, this wine even longer on the palate. It may last another 50 years, most excellent one of the wines of the night, the Huet Vouvray Le Mont Moyou, also outstanding, the 2006, maybe showing a little more age here, but a very pretty nose, honeyed apricot and peach-like fruit here, really forward and inviting, and thick and viscous on the tongue. This wine had that lovely beeswax quality to it there as well, that beach and apricot fruit, lovely freshness, need some foie gras with this one, excellent juice, and then the Domaine Weinbach Riesling Schlossberg, the Cuvée St. Catherine Le Indine, and this wine, oh man, incredible complexity here on the nose, flinty minerally note, kind of marzipan, orange marmalade, candy, citrus, really exotic bouquet, <clears throat> nearly 30 grams of residual sugar in this wine, but still dry on the finish. This wine definitely aptly put at the end of the tasting, had that incredible amount of sweetness, but still a lovely concentration, a lovely acidity, kind of orange and tangerine, lavender notes on the finish, really exotic. Thank you again, Phil Getson, for providing this wine. Most excellent juice. That's what we had to drink at our ultimate white tasting. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.